Hey, I'm Adam Stern and I'm going to teach you how to hold your breath longer. If you are interested in the wacky world of freediving or improving your own diving, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I post regular tutorials aimed at improving your diving. Before I launch into this, I do need to say that in any form of training, there are standard practices. But for the most part, when it comes down to the way that people train themselves or train others, it comes down to that person's opinion about what works and what doesn't work. So in this video, you're really just going to get my opinions about what works best when it comes to training for freediving and increasing your breath hold. So how do you hold your breath longer? Well, that kind of depends on what level of freediver you are because there are different exercises depending on what level you're at. This video will be aimed at a beginner to intermediate level. But basically, once you start diving deeper than 40 meters or holding your breath longer than four or let's say five minutes even, then the game changes again. Before I can even tell you how to train yourself to hold your breath longer, we need to work out what we're actually training because it's not like we have a breath holding muscle. For the most part, we're training our body's carbon dioxide tolerance or our CO2 tolerance. It's carbon dioxide that gives us the urge to breathe, not our oxygen levels. We're also training our body to deal with low oxygen levels or hypoxia. The thing about training our body to deal with low oxygen levels, which allow us to hold our breath longer or place our body under more exertion as we hold our breath. The thing is that it takes a long time. In a short period of time, in a matter of days and even weeks, you can train your body to deal with more and more amounts of CO2 and gain a higher tolerance to carbon dioxide. But for the most part, it usually takes weeks to months or even years to improve and increase your body's hypoxic threshold. We're also training our mammalian dive reflex. Many of the same physiological processes that happen in aquatic mammals like dolphins or whales also happen in humans and like almost everything in the human body, it is trainable. Lastly, we're training our body's anaerobic processes, most notably our body's ability to use lactate or lactic acid as a fuel source so that you don't get heavy or dead feeling legs when you're finning a lot. So first we're going to talk about how to train your static breath hold, which is the period of time that you can hold your breath for without moving. The best way to do this is with training tables. You may have heard of things called CO2 tables or O2 tables. A CO2 table traditionally is where you have the same breath hold time, but a decreasing recovery period or a decreasing period of time in between each breath hold where you can breathe. And it goes the opposite way for the O2 table. Usually we have the same recovery or, or breathing time and uh, we are increasing the period of time in which we are holding our breath. But we are not going to focus on these at all. Mostly because I find traditional CO2 tables to be mostly ineffective. And what most people think is an O2 or a hypoxic table, the table isn't really training your hypoxic threshold. A breath hold table is very simply a sequence of breath holds in which over the period of the breath holds, we are increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in our body depleting the oxygen in our body or both. In all cases, what we're doing is we are stressing our body and forcing it to adapt to either higher carbon dioxide or lower oxygen. This is my personal favorite static breath hold table. We do eight consecutive breath holds in which you must start a new breath hold every four minutes. You decide when you want to start breathing again and the remaining time before the next four minute mark is your recovery time. So, for example, if you held your breath for two minutes, you'll have two minutes to breathe before the next four minute mark in which you have to start a new breath hold. Or if, you've he if you held your breath for three minutes, then you have one minute in which you can recover and breathe before the next breath hold begins. Once you're able to do most of the holds in this table with one minute recovery and three minutes of breath holding, increase the interval by one minute. So you're starting a breath hold every five minutes. This will then allow you to do longer holds. I love this table because you decide when you want to come up. I always steer away from doing static tables in which the diver has to hold their breath for a period of time, especially when they're struggling and all they want to do is breathe, but they feel like they can't come up. That is the best way to completely ruin the static breath hold experience for yourself and to limit your potential future growth as a diver. But here's the thing. 
Training your static breath hold doesn't actually improve your ability to dive. <laughs> then why do we do it? Training static breath hold is the best way to develop deeper levels of relaxation, gain more control over your body, and experience higher levels of carbon dioxide in a very, very safe and controlled environment. It's the best way to experience contractions, even many contractions, and learn to be okay with them. It's also a very, very good way to train your mammalian dive reflex. But in truth, your mammalian dive reflex gets stronger and stronger and stronger every time you hold your breath, over the years. Well then how do you improve your diving ability? Well the very simple answer is dive. But there are other things you can do as well. The best thing is a dynamic CO2 table which is more or less swimming distances in a pool with a set period of recovery in between. I'm going to give you an example of two of my favorite dynamic CO2 tables. Surprise surprise it's the same as my favorite static CO2 table. You choose a distance let's say 25 meters, and you choose a time, let's say one minute. Every minute you must swim 25 meters, and the remaining time after you reach the other side is your recovery time. In this case, it will probably be around 30 to 35 odd seconds. What I like most about this table is that if you do it often, you're going to develop the optimum finning effort and speed because you'll want to get to the other side as quickly as possible, but not too quickly. Otherwise you'll be puffed out and it will take you too long to recover before the next swim. So when you do this again and again, you will develop that perfect middle ground, that optimum speed for finning. Doing this kind of training will mostly improve your body's tolerance to CO2 and its ability to use lactate or lactic acid as an effective fuel source so that you don't get heavy or burning legs when you're diving. If you want to start training your body's hypoxic threshold, a really great way to do this is by doing maximum swims. You swim as far as you can. Now with all of these exercises, you must be relaxed. There's no point doing the swims if you're stressed out. You won't gain very much from that. If you can't do it relaxed, don't do it at all. Especially with doing maximum or longer swims. The second that you've lost your comfort, that's when you come up. Another really great table is a Cooper test. It trains both your CO2 tolerance and your hypoxic threshold. This is when you swim as many 25 meter laps underwater as possible in 12 minutes. When the 12 minute, runs, 12 minute mark runs out, that final distance that you swam is your score. If anyone gets over 785 meters in the 12 minutes, please tell me that's my best score and I'll most likely be very upset. <laughs> now what if you don't live near a pool or you don't have a dive buddy to train with? Because any breath holding exercise that you do in the water, you must do with a certified or qualified dive buddy. You can't train static breath hold in the pool on your own, but you can do dry static breath hold, which is doing breath holds laying on the floor, sitting on the couch, laying in bed. You can never do any dynamic swims in a pool on your own, but you can do apnea walks on your own. Apnea walks are exactly what they sound like. You hold your breath and you walk. How fast do you walk? Well, you try to replicate your finning speed. You do exactly what you do in the water, in the pool, except you walk the distance. You can do maximum apnea walks, which I really do not recommend doing on your own. Or you can do CO2 tables. It's not as good as going to the pool, but it definitely helps. So how often should we be doing all this training? Twice a week is good, but no more than three times. Training breath holds in excess can start to deplete your iron and hemoglobin levels in your blood. So just take it nice and slow and make sure that your body always has plenty of recovery time. The final thing I wanna say before I head over to the couch and cuddle my dog. Is that with all these exercises, you never wanna push yourself too far. Keep them at a level that's challenging and relatively easy. A level in which you can succeed again and again and again. It's very, very easy for people to burn themselves out mentally from doing too difficult a breath hold table, especially over several days. Take care of yourself and embrace the contractions. If you did find this video helpful, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to this channel. 
I do make regular video tutorials to help build a safer and stronger worldwide freediving community. Thanks for watching. If you did have any questions, leave them in the comments below.